Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. This is my card for this week's color throwdown challenge. And if you visit my blog post, which will be linked directly below the video, I will have a picture that inspired this week's set of colors. And it will make perfect sense <laughs> why I chose this background stamp because it's like literal inspiration this time. So I am using Simon Says Stamps Poppies background that came out a couple releases ago. I forget when it came out. Came out a while ago. I raved about it and then it's been sitting here. And then I saw this color challenge or saw the inspiration picture for the color challenge and was like, oh, too perfect not to use. So I have Arches watercolor paper cold press in my Misty here. And I'd use my anti-static powder tool, everything. And then I'm inking up this stamp with a clear embossing ink. And I'm stamping it multiple times onto this watercolor paper because there is a lot of texture in this watercolor paper. And there's, you know, some a lot of detail like with the flower centers and all that. So I stamp, inked it up and stamped it a few times. And then this time I am using Ink on 3's Strawberry Champagne Embossing Powder. I've done other videos in the past using this embossing powder and just raved about it. It's... It's so pretty. <laughs> I love it. Hence the huge container of it because I think I had about five containers of it. Like you don't need this much of any of it, of any embossing powder. Like one container will last a person a very, very, very long time. But my favorites I have multiples of and then I put them in these great big uh, system of sandwich containers that I got from like Marshalls or something like years ago. So, and then my Studio Cadia triangle trays, I got extras of those and I use those to scoop the embossing powder. I only do that with my favorites, which are like my clear, my white, gold, this strawberry champagne, etc. So, anywho, love how that looks. And then for my watercoloring, I am using the Prima Pastel Dreams watercolor palette because that was another just like meant to be sort of thing. Because four of the colors in the palette are were dead ringers to the colors for the color challenge. So I didn't have to mix any colors, which I don't mind doing. I actually really enjoy, you know, mixing and matching colors, especially with watercolor. It's fun, like deepening colors or like coming up with a different color, etc. But with things like this, it's like, ooh, I love this palette anyway. I love the colors. And it also got me to use this sort of peach shade in the palette because that's the one color I don't really use very often. I use the pink and the orange and the yellow a lot. This peach shade right now that I'm using on this one flower. That one I just don't go for very often for whatever reason. I think more because it's like, ooh, I'd rather use pink. But that was part of the color challenge. So my actual watercoloring I kept pretty simple. I've super sped it up in editing. This is like 20 times fast. It was another one of these things though where it's just kind of you zone out, have music going, whatever. Um, I'm using my silver black velvet watercolor brushes again. I use these on my last card and it, every time I pick these up again, I just, I'm reminded how much I like them. <laughs> they're very nice brushes. They're not cheap. They're a bit more of an investment. Um, but they are really nice. Although again, tons of my videos I use most of the time. I just use my cheapy, either my Royal and Lang Nickel Zen or my Nouveau brushes that were like $11 for a pack of 11 or whatever it was, you know, like they're cheap and they work fine. But these silver black velvet brushes are very nice. So I did all the flowers with that palette. This green is from another palette. I think it was like the Decadent Pies palette. I just grabbed a green that went with the inspiration photo. It's not part of the color challenge, but I wanted that green for the background because one, the stems and the leaves. And also just to fill the background because I thought it'd be really nice to really get these like flowers to pop because normally when it's the color challenge I'll do like just like a gray in the background that sort of thing keep it more neutral but I'm glad I went with the green because I really like how it made everything look and then made sure everything was dry and I'm going to add splatter of course and I'm using just my lick this is Amsterdam white liquid meant for um calligraphy and whatnot uh, Rangers Picket Fence White Paint is a really nice one too for splatter. Either one works very similarly. So I splattered on that white. And then of course I'm going to splatter on, this is Rangers Perfect Pearl Powder in a mini mister that I have mixed with water. Anytime I'm doing shimmery splatter, it's this. And I splatter this on very heavily. <laughs> I was a little lighter handed with the white, but with the shimmer, I will just, I splatter this background a lot. And then at the end of the video, as always, I'll show like the shimmer. It's just, it's so pretty. 
So did a heavy, heavy, heavy splatter on this just because it could. And then let this completely dry. And then um, once everything is completely dry, I can remove this from the hardboard. And I had it taped down the entire time because that just helps, helps prevent warping, keeps everything a little bit cleaner. So peeled off that painter's tape and then I'm going to just cut this down a bit so it's a bit smaller than my A2 card front. So got that peeled off and then my card base is A2 size. It's heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. So it's a five and a half inch by four and a quarter inch top folding A2 card. I still have that poppies background in my Misty. And then I just used one of the Misty Creative Corners to place my card base where I wanted it. And then I'm gonna use more of the painter's tape and I'm gonna mask off, not only mask off the top portion of the card because I don't want to stamp past the spine of the card, but I also want it to hold this in place in case I needed to stamp it um, more than once. But in the end, I actually only needed to stamp it once and it was good. And I inked up the stamp with Simon's Clementine ink and then stamp that and again, just love it. It just kind of, you know, you got to have something on the inside of your cards. It just, all these years, I can't, my card to me isn't finished until I finish the inside. It's just become a thing. So anywho, the outside, inside of the card is done. For the sentiment I pulled out, this is the Thinking of You Wafer Die set. This came out years ago. This is still one of my, you know, oldie but goodie favorites from Simon. So I die cut it multiple times just from some peach cardstock scraps in my stash. So these were die cut three times glued together. And then I am holding them down to my hardboard with more of the painter's tape. And then I'm using that same Clementine ink and one of Simon's ink blending brushes and just blending the ink onto this just to kind of deepen it, give it more of that little bit of an orangey tint. And also it kind of gives it that little extra bit of dimension because I'm not completely covering these. I'm kind of keeping the color more concentrated at the bottom portion of the letters, but then just blending it on because it just, I really liked how this looked. And then I remembered last second that I still needed to do the dots of the eye or the tittles of the eye. I still can barely say that with a straight face. That was something though I learned from Laura Basson's videos, like Laura Fedora. If you don't watch her videos, you should, because her videos are, one, they're hilarious. You usually learn completely random things and two, her cards are amazing. Like seriously. Anyway, put those on as well and was able to just gently blend because those are tiny little pieces there. And then I'm going to quickly just clean off these bl this blending brush. I just rub my blending brushes onto um, microfiber cloth. You can see this one is like massively stained when it's completely full of ink. I'll wash it. And then I just keep using it. That's what I do. I don't wash my brushes, you know, I just kind of keep them to the similar color. So whatever color they're stained as, if it's red or blue or whatever, that's what I'll use from then on. I'll use red inks with the red brush, etc. So anywho, I used that creative corner again, just that ruler to kind of give me a straight line. I've mentioned this a lot in videos. I'm finding the older I get, the worse I'm getting at eyeballing things. <laughs> I'm just, no, I used to be so good at it, but now it's like, I, no, I don't think that's straight. Some things I still can eyeball, but yeah, stuff like this for cards, I'll think it's straight. And then it's harder too when you're filming because then you're not sitting, you know, I'm not sitting and looking down straight. I'm kind of filming ahead of me, if that makes sense. I'm sitting back a little bit because if I put my head over, you guys can't see anything. So anyway, use that to give me a little bit of a guide though, so I could adhere the sentiments. I was going to add, com you know, companion sentiments, stamp a sentiment on the inside, etc. And ended up deciding not to. I really, I didn't want to add anything else, you know, any more like bits of cardstock or anything to the front of the card. I really like this background. I just, ugh, the poppies are just so pretty. So what I ended up doing was just adhering this panel to my card base. And then I'm only adding just a little bit of bling, nothing too crazy. I had these poppy bloom, this like confetti pack from Simon and same thing. It was like just meant to be. Like the colors were perfect for this. So I had to just add just a few of them, nothing too crazy, but I wanted, you know, all that watercolor to really show and just the colors, like, I don't know. It's even though it's this time of year, we're kind of getting more into like doing fall projects and everything and Halloween, of course, stay tuned for those. But these just, they're just so cheerful. I don't know. It was really fun making this card. So hope you guys enjoyed it. 
as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post, like I said, and I'll have a link to the color challenge in the blog post as well. And I'll have a supply list with links to everything so you can check it out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.